While the Ukrainian army continues its operations in the Kherson region, the Russians are trying different tactics to prevent the advance of Ukrainian forces in this region. The Ukrainian defense forces in and near Krynki want to increase the area of movement in the region and break the blocks formed by the Russian forces. It is very important for Ukraine to keep the Russians in the region away from the Krynki direction. It is very important to fully control Krynki and its surroundings in order to advance in Kherson. The Russian army is organizing counterattack operations here to prevent Ukrainian troops from advancing. The last operation organized by the Russians was destroyed along with unmanned aerial vehicles. The Russians had organized an offensive operation with armored vehicles and infantry, but failed. The Russians again organized such an attack operation, but failed again. Ukrainian Marines gave more information about what the Russians were actually trying to do. They said that the main tactic was to use tanks and armored personnel carriers to move Russian troops as deep as possible into the Krynki area. The Ukrainian army is continuing reconnaissance operations in the area. They continue to monitor the movements of the Russians in the area. Ukrainian drones have opened fire on Russian positions in the forest, where the Russians are trying to accumulate heavy equipment for attacks. By flying back and forth over Krynki, Ukrainians are able to detect most of the incoming Russian equipment. The Ukrainian army has been inflicting losses on the Russians with defensive and offensive operations in the region. After recent reconnaissance operations, a large number of heavy equipment belonging to the Russians were destroyed. While the Russian forces continue their offensive operations, they deploy small offensive units in two different directions. The Russians opened an attack direction from the southwest and northeast. Russian troops in the northeastern direction wanted to put pressure on Ukrainian troops in the region. However, Ukrainian drone pilots destroyed a Russian vehicle in the area. Russian infantry also fled with this attack. Ukraine's success in this direction allowed the Ukrainians to fully focus on the main Russian attack coming from the western side of the forest. The first two Russian tanks carrying infantrymen came under fire as soon as they emerged from the forest. The tanks were forced to engage and began trying to suppress the Ukrainian firing points in front of them. The Russian infantry therefore failed to hold on to the settlement and immediately fled back into the forest. Ukrainian kamikaze drones destroyed Russian tanks in the area and the crews were also neutralized. The Ukrainian army did not allow the Russians to advance in the area. Madiar's drone detachment destroyed 10 of 11 tanks and armored fighting vehicles, and 28 of 31 Russian drones detected. The Russians lost about 100 tanks and armored fighting vehicles around Krynki during this entire period, of which the Ukrainians destroyed 10% in just one day. Combined with a high level of coordination with Ukrainian army drones and artillery, they have developed a solid defensive structure that has enabled the Ukrainians to destroy the most powerful Russian mechanized attacks ever recorded in this region. Mikhailo Podolyak, advisor to the head of the presidential office, made some statements. Ukraine needs resources to deter Russia, Mikhailo Podolyak said. The presidential advisor added that everyone was wrong, but it will take years to right this wrong, and it takes time to build an army capable of resisting the Russian military machine. At the moment, this sign provides effective resistance for Ukraine and Europe. The armed forces of Ukraine have proven that they can, know how to, and will destroy Russian military capabilities and hopes of dominance, he said. Podolia called for providing Ukraine with the necessary resources, noting that this would turn the country into an impregnable wall that would ensure the reconstruction of global security. U.S. President Joe Biden also stated that Russia's full invasion of Ukraine could lead to very bad consequences. Recently, U.S. President Joe Biden stated that if Russian dictator Volodymyr Putin seizes Ukraine, he will not stop there. White House National Security Council coordinator John Kirby stated that if the U.S. stops supporting Ukraine, Russia will reach the borders of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Zelensky says at every opportunity that Ukraine needs more military aid and that Ukraine's independence concerns the whole world. Germany has confirmed that it will double its military aid to Ukraine in 2024. The amount of aid will be 8 billion euros, Minister for Europe and Climate Anna Larmann said on the eve of the EU Foreign Affairs Council meeting. Germany has become one of the countries helping Ukraine by providing military, 
political and financial support. Berlin has provided artillery of various types, Leopard tanks of old and new modifications, Iris T and Patriot air defense systems, ammunition, vehicles, drones and other weapons. It is known that the second group of Ukrainian Patriot air defense system operators also completed their training in Germany. A total of 70 Ukrainian soldiers and officers were trained. The training course lasted more than six weeks. The Ukrainian army needs this kind of military assistance. The will and strong stance shown by Ukrainian soldiers and Ukrainian commanders is one of the biggest reasons for Ukraine's success. Along with the developments in the Kherson region, intense fighting continues in and around Avdivka. In our previous report, we reported that the Ukrainian army prevented a counterattack by Russian troops and destroyed a large number of Russian soldiers. UK intelligence has provided information about Ukrainian operations in the direction of Avdivka. UK intelligence says that Ukrainian forces have organized a series of successful counterattacks near Stepova. Ukrainian units have prevented Russian forces from gaining full control of the village of Stepova, most likely by carrying out successful local counterattacks. Here, Russia is trying to be part of a pincer movement to encircle Avdivka in its heavily defended industrial area, he said. The Ukrainian army has declared that the invaders will not be able to capture Avdivka unless they seize the territory of the Avdivka coke plant. The plant is currently controlled by the armed forces of Ukraine. According to the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, Ukrainian troops repelled 49 enemy attacks in the Avdivka direction, defended their positions on the left bank of the Dnipro River, and destroyed the enemy's ammunition depot. In particular, according to the Institute for the Study of War, Ukrainian forces are defending their positions on the east bank of the Dnipro River. The Ukrainian armed forces currently control the entire Veliki Potemkin Island southwest of Kherson. However, the number of soldiers lost by the Russians on a daily basis has reached 1,030, while the Russians have lost 339,850 soldiers since the beginning of the war. The United Kingdom also provided other important information on Russia. The Russian military lacks night vision devices and special cameras for drones to conduct combat operations at night, as well as appropriate military training in the dark, according to the UK Ministry of Defense. Meanwhile, Ukrainian troops often receive night vision devices from international partners. The UK Ministry of Defense notes that these problems of the Russians are also related to the fact that military exercises in Russia rarely emphasize nighttime training. Instead, they tend to be structured around staged daytime events to impress visiting senior officers. In contrast, a Russian soldier claimed that Ukrainian forces move mostly at night. What do you think is the main reason why the Russian army cannot achieve the desired results in the war, despite the use of equipment equipped with advanced technologies and the huge size of its army? As the number of soldiers and equipment lost by the Russian army continues to increase, it is very difficult to continue the war. What do you think about the operations of the Ukrainian army in the Kherson region, which is seen as very important for the Crimean region and the developments in the Avdivka region? where the most intense fighting in the war took place. Do you think the Ukrainian army will be able to continue to repel the intense Russian attacks in Avdivka while continuing to advance in Kherson?